So we have reached a point in the text by Atisha, which treats bodhicitta. It's about verse number five, where we are going to start from today. And that verse, which I'm going to read out, is what, what shows the path of the Mahayana. And the verse says the following, those who through their personal suffering truly want to end completely all the suffering of others are persons of supreme capacity. ま、そんけです。あれ。あれ。あ、たんでした、たんです。おや。あれ。あの、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。てっ。
Narato Mit Samal Yeg Dunede Kare Selade Dini Narazi Kive Dunye Kawa Dunye Nawe Dunye Chive Dunye Digi Kara Narazo Debatsene Minibi Dunye Minduba Narazo Mango Shuchi Tebe Dunye Minduba Todo Bobe Dunye Selagata Then they get that Dunye Dungenge Ranshin did it also. Dinero? What that did they get Dungenge Ranshin de la Santa, the Ranjuki Dover, so so Dungen de Gede Santa, Gera? And Dungenge Tangaraz qua Toma Mevane Dungen de Gignonja Yamba. Tando Narazo Dungenge Satameva Jinomba. Save a Tameva da Vichinoa. Oh, do Saneda? Ah, Dungenge. Dunne Shell a pack up over a shenda within a park, pack up over your head. That shank it in the cup hopping in the candles, runner. Sibe, Siba cor, cor de angi, Major Nanga, tied over Simje, Chica Malibana, or pass on down with your head. To get the nature of Mariorta, said to get the nature of young yortas, David is to get the nature of young and young body. Tada dunga yong and yong shibari, Maovale dunga de dege yong tai yong yeres, dunga de dege yong yeres, ta consola. How so? Tang yong de je stagena dunga de dege dunga yong de yege, Major Nange, Tadanya de Simjin, Dida, Tanje, Major Sela de Sosu de Tsewe ma. Wa Sosu de Shibu. Matabola, Dungekang and the Deja Tay in the Dedala Mini Ninji City. Dunga de la Tardu, Dunga de la Trendu, Dunga de la Gemdu, Genera. Those are Ninji somebody kept going at it. Let the Manta and it just chill over. That Tare Takali Tad so Dodisha away not on the Kibu Chumune, Kali Kandis, Semba Kalo. So drawing on the commentary, it is about starting to understand what it actually means to be an individual of higher capacity, of supreme capacity, and therefore a practitioner of the Mahayana. So this individual of greater capacity also starts with reflecting and contemplating about the teachings of the individuals of least and middling capacities that individual with greater capacities will also go through the stages of contemplating the same teachings the same practices and as we have seen um, in the previous steps there starts to be a lot of awareness about the own suffering that we as an individual experience so the individual starts to understand what suffering is about by analyzing and investigating suffering in their own lives in their own mind stream so for example if we draw upon the suffering that we all experience that will be for example the suffering of birth of age of sickness and death or the suffering of not obtaining what we are so hardly striving for with so much effort or also the suffering of encountering so many times things that are unpleasant to us that are suffering to us so we have seen that we, we continue to this investigation about suffering, also considering that suffering is endless, that suffering mm -hmm. in samsara means that it has started at, at no beginning, basically. There has always been suffering, and this suffering is endless. It is in samsara, it's always experienced in one way or the or the other. So by analyzing and in investigating our own life and our own mind stream and the nature of suffering in our own lives then this individual understands what suffering is about 
And therefore, by understanding what suffering is about, then and that suffering is omnipresent in samsara, the wish arises to free oneself from the origins of suffering, to get free, to get liberated from the suffering, from the causes of suffering. And this wish to get liberated from the causes of suffering, we have seen as what is called renunciation. So renunciating, uh, um, generating the mm -hmm. certainty about suffering, about the truth of suffering and that um, one develops the wish to get liberated from suffering. So now when we come to the Mahayana path, this idea, this focus on myself and my own liberation from suffering is interchanged with focusing on the others, on other sen sentient beings. So it's not anymore only about myself and my own suffering, but we are turning the mind towards, the focus towards other sentient beings. And how does it work? So it starts with developing great compassion. So great compassion is an essential, essential step in um, growing a heart for sentient beings that prioritizes the, the benefit of sentient beings over our, our own. So one starts to contemplate, to, to reflect actually that all sentient beings in samsara in the cyclic existence have been our, our previous mothers in one life or the other. And that does not exclude a single being. So when we transform in the Mahayana our focus towards the others, then we are not going to exclude even a single sentient being. And just the suffering that we have contemplated upon before that we experience ourselves, we understand that they also suffer in the same way that they are also encountering exactly the same circumstances of suffering that I have encountered. And they are encountering this limitless suffering not only now, but they have encountered it in the past and they will encounter it in the future. And all these sentient beings who are suffering so incredibly in an infinite way, which is like just, it's never stopping as long as they are in samsara. All of them have been my mothers. So they have been so full of love and kindness towards me. And therefore I wish, I wish that they may be free. I want to liberate them. I, I really grow a heart that may I be able to protect them from this. So these, this kind of great compassion, this big, big heart is what we have to arise, to generate. So, so good to me, young, but Tata, young, Shimba, Mom, but your regular to me, the Dalla, Sal Tamba, you know. Rani, do me, Juta Chabala, Tando, the Samba de Tende, young cigarettes, Sangola. Narado Suyan, a domain in the Barabas. A Langarangan, Gergicho, Langa, Trevor, Sal Tamba, you know. Rani, Gergichan, a Sal Tamba, you know, do do me, Juta Chabala, and to Tando, she tarag and Dobachi, that young cigarettes. Ta yon seba in this not culture nest to me to get a dugi or marvel, so to me the dugi or marvel, and mundu by in this not to me good a job of a tandish. Che yada by Chengenji yena, that the young go younger. That che machin and miji in by yena, middle and ne nata to judge you by yena. Ne nata de get the come misu becang a shirt at the yard. Never the gang a shirt at the yard. Kangesh, which tried the end of the Nedi, you call it in a junior as <laughs> Labdi <laughs> Amji, or that grandi, or Nama Chigena Tama Mamutonson, or Dene Chara Mamutonson, or Yananjig, that the Bangama read that that chick shirzi hat, the negri, Damanda, the legend, that Dane Gerang and Nazadi, they didn't deny the need in a junior slava, you know. That mean never the true machine in midge. Ah, that tinted Naman Arange, Satan, the Tonda, the Chedan, Tamjabula, Mandibari, Mandiba, that Tamja Tang one in a pungy son of Sansa Yorba. Guys, a good Nazatla, Missuba Shade Yorba. I'm just together, Nazatine Junjas, Jenako, Motor Chazara, Motor Chazara. What didn't she get? Never day, so so get Ned de la Tanda Yoba, that didn't she chen. Naranzo church again in Michigan, 
Sen dedim ne nazatan salım adamcı. Koğaççıdan çırak dünyalı sandıkça. Hadın da tanda şeye ki dünyadaki sandıkça. Rönçü tabi dünyada asırladı. Sözü gülü kewa kawa nawa çiwa döbatsa ne minibe. Mündüba todu babi dünyadaki de. Ne hakkı da var? Tadi kare segure. Nasıl çocuğun kansadın ne? Korobagi dünyacıdan çırak da samlutan ne? Samlutan ne da? Tena koğaçı da çırak samlutan ne? Kandı samlutan go yarası ne? Çiğ samlutan bayı ne? Kevi dünyaya. Kavi dünyaya. Nave dünyaya. Şivi dünyaya. Sosogun döbatse ne? Manyi be dünyaya. Sosola mündüba mangu uçu cümwe dünyaya. Dine yoruba. O dinde de tam anca kuaba mançala di yoruba. Kuaçi dünyaya silav gare. Hako sana. O dinde de kuaçi da çeta. Mi sosola niya dünyaya mi. Mi rana sosola dünyaya minde orere yedir ya. Gerek. Wah, thamal mending ni, ni mika sel, misi ke dunia ni, ni dah mandat ni, ni yor apa? Oh, dende ke ta dunia kuaci dah cerita ke dunia ke juta cebal le trende ke sampai je, ta ke yundi nyunjung sampai aski ke yor apa? Mhm. Biar dina je susu ke cewa mati, cendih mati lah. Kange mangu je cerita ni apa ni na? Beraja na, mendong je kang sarjo ke na? Meshu chumu wacha bargi bim bawa chik nala susu maadhi desa na susu la susu tsewe maa yimba yinda shepu chit ta ninja kye na dene maadhi dele atun ya ki tapshi chikir ba tapshi yo na yose chikir ba tapshi yo ba yinda yose chikir ba ta dunge dele kya bar chikir ni dunge dele chowar chikir ni dunge dele chana sange samzu chikir ba re wo dene je na simji chikya mwale ba su Sosoga tindeye manan shin kadin shin bora yesu gwaare. Chazan ninji samba se ke yindu simje chijang malu bal tane sa. Sanla ke guwe ta. Tipa chenbu kabla. Ha. So, it is normal that even if as dharma practitioners we develop we have the wish to get free from our own suffering that's very normal because when we feel in in a difficult moment on when we directly experience suffering and especially when we reflect about all the suffering that we have experienced or that um when experiences in samsara in general then of course when we get become aware of this we will have the wish to get free ourselves we will have the wish to get liberated so this is something that happens also for Dhamma practitioners, because when we are in a difficult situation, we just wish, okay, may this end, may I be free from the situation. And now given the example of a, a sick person, a sick person who is not a Dharma practitioner, they will they will have the same, the same thing. So just whether we are Dharma practitioners or not, for example, uh, a sick person experiences a lot of difficulties in the moment of illness, and then the person will ask him or herself, why am I sick? What's the cause for this? So then they will tend to a doctor and the doctor will analyze and investigate and tell them, you see, um, you have been drinking too much. Uh, you have been eating too much uh, sugar, eat too much fat and this and this and that. So then the patient starts to understand, oh, actually these and these are the causes for my disease and they they are based on my own behavior so that was really not okay so i have to give that up i have to change in order to heal so even a normal person has the wish when they understand the condition to get free from it and to do something about it and in the for a dharma practitioner of course then that will go towards the freedom and the liberation from suffering so when we come to the mahayana as we have heard, it's about extending the mind even further than just including ourselves. So one comes to reflect about the condition that samsara entails. Cyclic existence is a vessel for all sorts of suffering, for common suffering or for very individual suffering. 
Mm. And common suffering, what does it mean? Does it, or general, so there's a general suffering and the category of, of um, yeah, a more individual kind of suffering. And general suffering would be, for example, that what we all experience as human beings, that would be birth, sickness, old age and death, not getting what we want, obtaining what we do not want. So these are sort of general forms of suffering. But within our own individual lives, then we have so many different kinds of suffering that can be very personal and very different from person to person. So a Mahayana practitioner, of course, has at the outset developed the wish to get free from suffering. So the so-called um, thought of renunciation. But then that individual continues to expand towards the understanding that all sentient beings have been our mothers. And as mothers, they have been incredibly kind and incredibly loving and caring towards us. So what would, what do, what would happen if we would see a kind person, a person close to our heart, like our mother in the midst of difficulties? Maybe imagine like your mother falling or being in the midst of a, a um, burning fire pit yeah then because of the strong compassion that you or the caring loving side of yourself that you have the affection towards that person you would try anything to free them from that you would try anything to liberate them from the condition they are in and save them from that and in in this way just as the example of one person maybe our mother from this life all sentient beings have been our mothers and are therefore in the same manner um, they deserve they deserve our attention and our affection and our gratitude and in this kind of manner we are then entering um, we, we are opening up the the mind in the Mahayana path to include all sentient beings without exception どうよ、さら。じゃあ、さんだ、で、で、だ。せが、たんぼで、かす、ランジュ、ゲ、あ、人間さんばり、けじし。せが、にぼで、かす、人間、ゲ、じゃ、でし。せ、かんばそんばで
So when we look at verse number five, we see the steps that were just explained um, elucidated here in the first three lines. So the first line, those who through their personal suffering is referring to this process of developing renunciation in our own mind stream, just as it was explained. So we have talked vastly about this in the previous part of the text where it was about talking uh, about the steps of an individual of middling capacity, right? So we have already discussed this process of developing re renunciation in, in this section. So the second line truly wants to end completely. Um, so this is referring to compassion, to this, this new uh, aspect to the Mahayana that we just talked about also. So the question is, how do we bring, how do we generate compassion? We de develop it in the way that we think about that in the same way how we have understood ourselves to suffer and grown the wish to get free from suffering, all sentient beings have exactly the same wish. They experience exactly in the same way, more or less in the same way, but they all experience suffering just as I do. And all of them want to be free from the suffering. They do not want to experience the suffering. And then it further grows. This, this uh, process continues to reflect that actually who are these sentient beings? These sentient beings are my previous mothers. And this so the the and they, they suffer in all these manifold ways. So for example, in the ways that we have just seen birth, sickness, old age, and so on, and all these various ways of how they suffer. So the nature of suffering, that is what is uh, was spoken by the Buddha in the first turning of the Dharma wheel in the Four Noble Truths. So then, <clears throat> so then we, by, through this understanding that all sentient beings are very dear to our heart because they have been our parents, our mothers, and now they are all suffering in such an incredible way. They have suffered in the past, they will suffer in the future. Then it continues, our, the, the process continues with the wish, may they be free from this. May they be free from the suffering. May they be liberated from the suffering. And then actually the next step is to grow a confidence and I will do it. I am going to free them. I am going to bring the liberation from suffering for all sentient beings about. And here we are talking about this great altruistic, the superior mindset of compassion. And then finally, we will come to the aspect of bodhicitta. So bodhicitta says, Okay, you have a nice thought there, good intention, but how are you going? How are you going to do it? <laughs> how will you free them? Also, <laughs> Gobala 
<clears throat> so here, therefore, we see this really uh, altruistic, compassionate heart is a heart of great confidence, of really a lot of determination and courage, basically courage. Courage because it has the wish to free and liberate all sentient beings without leaving a single one behind from suffering and the causes of suffering, whatever they may be and how many there may be. If we had ever had this courage, this big heart of altruistic compassion, that is incredible. That's really something very great. But how are we going to do that? We, we should ask ourselves, okay, I have this intent, this confidence or a courage, but are, am I able to really do this? Am I able to free them right now? And the fact is that actually in order to free them, first I have to be free myself. I have to liberate myself from the state of uh, suffering and so on. I have to become a fully enlightened Buddha in order to, to help them. So my intention is the one that what just was explained and how do I do it? By becoming a Buddha myself, by becoming fully awake, but for whom? Not for my own sake, but for the sake of all sentient beings, of all these sentient beings who are, uh, have been my mothers, who are um, suffering, so that I may be able, and when I become a Buddha, I, may, I will be able to free them from suffering and the causes of suffering. And I will be able to lead them to the same realization, so to full awakening, where they will finally be free from suffering. And this, so this kind of mindset, this very special state of mind, this very special intention, is what is called bodhicitta, the, the mind of awakening or heart of awakening. Yes, Shanghai みねべにゃんで。あ、みねべにゃんで。だみんな箱もさんでだ。三軒中国語版だ。だ三軒語版。三軒よどちょ、三軒ちっちゃまねば三軒語版の語で三軒でだ。うん。だってんごばな。もう
Tak cenderung semua ni dikira apa? Kadu ini ya, yo kopa. Ma, tenda yo. Kadu ini ya, tak par mewa ini na cenderung semua segi mana? Ma, semua cuaca ni cenderung semua segi yo apa? Tiada. Sam-sam lah yo na, ani cenderung ke semua segi mana be? Tengok mana, tak sam-sam je mana men cenderung cenderung semua segi lau na be lah. Ale. Cenderung semua segi lau tu beracun aku tu, doa sih tu 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 de de. Kalasan tu mewah je, ya malu. Kalasan tu jauh lah. Alah aku tu. Kasih wujud kau tu betul tu deh lah. Cut 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 tuan ya, tuan aja tenggir mata, jadi tuan tu mana macam tu. Cenjuk semua tu kadir ni, tenggir tenggir tu boleh lah. Tapi semua tenggir je, ya semua tenggir cenjuk semua nyawa tu mana ni di kasa tu cenjuk semua asli cang tu lah. Hm. Jibu cembu asli tu. Hm. So, <clears throat> the wish um, that we are talking about, this great intent that we are talking about here is the following, to repeat again. The wish that may I free all sentient beings from their suffering or limitless sentient beings from suffering and the causes of suffering. And the suffering that we are, and, and um, the suffering that is, first of all, infinite right now, and that is of many kinds, and the wishes of may, may I free them from suffering and bring the benefit of beings about. So we are not wanting to free them just from any kind of suffering, but we want to free them from the true cause for suffering that are the two veils, the veils of afflictions and the veils of, of uh, knowledge or cognitive veils. And so may I free all sentient beings from suffering and the causes of suffering, so the true causes of suffering. May I bring the benefit of beings about, and in order to do that, I myself have to become a Buddha. So I do not actually only want to free them. I want that they also become Buddhas, that they become fully awakened. But for in order to do this, in order to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering and to lead them to the stage of full awakening, I myself have to become a Buddha first. Although this is my striving, my intent is very clear, but in order to really bring this result about I have to become a Buddha and therefore as one might already hear from these lines there is a twofold aspiration in here the twofold aspiration is first the first one is I want to lead all sentient beings to the stage of Buddhahood the second one is in order to do that I myself have to become a Buddha so this is the twofold intention. So let me just repeat that. The first one is the intention, the aspiration. I will lead all sentient beings to the level of awakening. And the second one is in order to do that for the sake of liberating them, I myself will become, will strive and put a lot of effort in becoming a Buddha myself. This kind of twofold intention, this is what is what bodhicitta entails. In order to be really this extraordinary mental state, has to be there at all times, not just one moment yes and the other no. For it has to be there effortlessly, night and day then we can really talk about the, the um, arisal of bodhicitta. Then an individual has become a bodhisattva. An individual, we, we are not talking about bodhicitta if um, it just happens in a certain moment that we think about, about this intention and then we forget for the rest of the day. Then, then we are not really talking about bodhicitta. And the example Ishila gave, it's a little bit like with eating. When we are hungry, 
we think about oh i want to i want to calm my hunger i have to eat something but then when the when the belly is full we will never think about eating or ah, i have to eat now and calm my 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 belly and fill my stomach so this is a very you see very conditioned thinking with the with the food here with this mm -hmm. example so bodhicitta cannot be uh this fluctuating but a real bodhicitta is there at all times night and day so these consisting of these of this twofold aspiration yes, and then that is uh an individual of higher capacity uh, can, ただ、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃんと、ちゃん
Chitanga Chu Salav in the Salo Kandajik and Tango Yare Salade, Sangi Dibu Sangi and Duber Chig and Dubchig Tap de la Chu Salangu Yare. Kindin Salay and the Dibu Sangi Goma. Then they get the lam yum ling is Jimbala Mos, shook the Yanga Kansaja like Kindin Salangu. Lam <laughs> Che the Tejing Che, Tejing a Lamnia Linger in Badigaja. Lamnia Linger in Bat in the Korang in Yamsalan Shiano turn to me in Dinibujaja. The Dala gives us some cigar, you the Dala, Tanga do Tandana Sundi, Changu Sangi Goma, Changu Chambos at the Matoga about the Kelsey Chigan, Mr. Sano would reach down with your tongue. Just a Raza Sangela gives the shares of the Kundaja Salamadanje, Tangar of the Salamadaja, Tanga the Kunda de Nazuke to Gumarma. What is Yinji Minji? The gay, the Sal Kortua Chamber. And therefore, when we go for refuge, yeah, when when we go for refuge, then we are actually taking refuge in this final, in this final goal, the final accomplishment that, that is full awakening, the state of the Buddha. So we have to be very clear: what is the state of the Buddha? What is full awakening? We we should really, whenever we re repeat refuge or think about full awakening, full enlightenment, know what is actually meant by that. So if we look at the word Buddha, in Tibetan it has two syllables, Sangye, and the meaning is very beautiful and is very clear. So Sang refers to extinguishing, to, or to, to coming to an end of all veils, of the afflictive veils, so of the veils of affliction and of the veils of cognition, of knowledge, how they are also called. So sang means really this clearing, clearing away of all veils of afflictions and knowledge. And that entails the removal of all kinds of faults. So what happens when all faults are removed, then only qualities are left so that because there being no faults no mistakes in the way then the qualities <laughs> can completely unfold so yeah actually in tibetan means this complete this unfolding is an expansion of qualities sang ye. so sang is the eliminating the purifying aspect and ye is the unfolding of qualities and that is that is what a Buddha is. That is what the state of full enlightenment is. And this is why the Buddha is also called the supreme refuge, the supreme protector or the supreme uh, guide, the one who really is able to show the path. And therefore, when we go for refuge, when we re repeat the refuge formula, then we should be very clear when we say, I go for refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Buddha. The, that Buddha is this state that we have just explained. And then there is the Dharma. So the Dharma is the result, um, the, 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 sorry, the, the methods that bring forth this result of Buddhahood. So the, the path the path um, in this case of the Mahayana. So the Mahayana practices, this is what the Dharma here is, the Mahayana path. And then 
we take refuge uh, in the Sangha and the Sangha being the community of noble practitioners. So here we are taking refuge to the noble Sangha, not just the ordinary Sangha. And the noble Sangha means um, individuals who have entered into the path that leads to full awakening and individuals that are also able to show to others this path, to explain without error how they have to go on this path to, to achieve exactly this result. And therefore, whenever you repeat, I take refuge to the Buddha from now on to the Dharma and the Sangha, then please don't think of the statue on your shrine or don't think of the Tanka because they are not going to help you. They are not, they don't have the power to protect you in, and to, to, um, to be a refuge. So be very clear when you ever you repeat the refuge formula, what is exactly meant. So we should have that understanding as it was just explained. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had discovering Buddhism class and a conversation came up about the aspiration of bodhicitta. Um, and one of the people said, you know, why can we not have, you know, the wish for enlightenment first? And then you want to work for others because it sounds possible that you should be able to, you know, in theory, become a Buddha without bodhicitta. You know, you just want to do it for yourself. You want the best for yourself. You want all the obscurations removed just for you. Is that is that possible? I'm guessing not, but I just like to know why. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, uh, discovering Buddhism, uh, Tangborwa <laughs> Young <laughs> Shen Mm, Jangju Jangju Hmm. 
Nanti kewasa sedih sen atau nanti kanya sahres. Siapa ada kewasa es kamu tu? So, bodhicitta to to um, when we talk talk about generating bodhicitta, then there are two aspects. And one is the aspiring aspect, and one is the engaging, the practicing aspect. So when it's about the practicing aspect of bodhicitta, then first of all, we have the basis of the vow, the vow being our motivation and so on. And on the basis of that, then we practice the various paramitas, right? We do uh, practice generosity, um, diligence, patience, um, discipline, uh, meditative concentration, and wisdom. And these practices that the applicating bodhicitta, the practicing bodhicitta exerts, they are related to the benefit of others and to other sentient beings because you need them for the practice. Because if you think about generosity, for instance. Generosity itself entails that there is somebody to whom we can be generous to. And therefore we need other sentient beings to be part of our practice of generosity. And these various actions of the paramitas, why do we need them? Because that's what accumulates merit. That's what causes the accumulations to gather so that we will be able to become fully enlightened. So the cause for enlightenment is the, the completion of the two accumulations. And the, the paramitas, for example, is like the main way how we accumulate merit and wisdom. So why do we say paramitas? Paramita is only a paramita. So generosity is only a paramita when it is combined with loving kindness, compassion and bodhicitta. Otherwise we are not talking about paramitas. So you could practice bodhicitta in the um, Hinayana path, the path that's aiming for self-liberation. You could, without problem, do be diligent, be discipline, uh, disciplined and so on, and not focusing on others. And you would probably proceed on the path of the, of the, uh, of the Hinayana, but that will not lead you to full enlightenment. Why? Because you're not able to gather the accumulations that you need, the virtue. Yeah, we're always talking about accumulating virtue because virtue and the accumulations of merit and wisdom are what leads us to full enlightenment. This one. Chaifan, Razo. Chanjuk Sam said the Makina. Chimbe Parchin said you are Mindus. Chimbe Pajin, you are Manu, Tsuru Pajin, you are Mata Pajin Shanta, you are Chimbe Pajin Tangodrava. ऐसा <laughs> ताचिकुचाऊ Kese kira tsomba ya goji shaya doba yeme tsomba. Kira tsomba shi kaya jau tsomba ya goji shaya doba yeme yina ya. Kya mishin dal jau ma jana. Ni kira tsomba di su nyugure ya na. Su 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 nyugay mishi guaru wa sdeya. Hage la sangu shi tango ra. Kira nimu ka shi jing gogor dangai kira tsomba ya goji shaya 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 goji shaya
<clears throat> in other words, or yeah, in other words, if we don't generate bodhicitta, then we are not able to practice the parameter of generosity. If we are not able to practice the parameter of generosity, we are not able to practice the other parameters. And therefore, all these practices that lead to awakening, they rely on bodhicitta. They depend on bodhicitta on the two aspects, these two aspirations of bodhicitta, the aspiring aspect and the, pra the, the practical aspect. So then again, on what does bodhicitta rely on? What is the bodhicitta depending on? The cause for bodhicitta is this great altruistic compassionate heart that wishes may I free all sentient beings without exception from suffering and the causes of suffering. I am going to do it. I will free them. I will liberate them. So this great, so this great courage here we're talking about again has causes, which are compassion. And then like we are going backwards, right? Like, like uh, looking backwards, what were the causes for this, for this, for this? So when we go back then from, from this altruistic compassion, we, we go to the previous step, which is compassion. Compassion relies on loving kindness. Loving kindness relies on understanding that all sentient beings have been our mothers. So this, they are truly dependent on each other, all of these aspects. Just, we could think of the example of a business person, somebody who wants to become a good salesman, a good businessman or woman then without relying on others this person will never succeed who to whom would they sell they, their stuff if they don't work with others if they don't don't think of others then they would never be able to sell anything because to whom would they sell or if a, a business person just um, wants to make good business but they keep on selling fake stuff or stuff of really bad quality, <laughs> they would never succeed. So they have to think the business person, in order to bring about his own goal, has to think about others. What do they want? What do they need? What would what can help them? And that's then how this person will succeed. The same is with a, with a restaurant or a cook. You know, if you just cook really bad food all the time, <laughs> you will not succeed in your business. People will not come to eat. <laughs> So in order to bring your own uh, benefit about, you need others. You need to rely and think about others. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So this is also what we, what, what we call also interdependence. Things are so strongly depending on each other. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Chanjuk Rogotala <laughs> Okay. Okay. 
Njën të bi, qik po i na një tonë një tonë për shërap, me pas do të përgjëre, gjëngru ki sem gogi o marë i roa. Ja, ja. We are continuously using the term now awakening, full enlightenment, and Buddhahood. So, this is, as we have seen, the state where, let me rephrase that, in Tibetan also we have seen the term Sangye, but there is another one, which is Jangjub, and Jangjub means enlightenment. Why Sangye is more what we translate as awakening. So Jangjub, enlightenment, has also these two syllables. So the first one, Jang, is also the word for cleaning, for, for, for cleaning something. So this part of enlightenment, the first syllable of cleaning, is the removal, referring to the removal of afflictions, of the, the vase of afflictions and the vase of knowledge, just as we have seen also with the syllable sung before. And it, in order to remove the veils of afflictions, wisdom that realizes emptiness would be enough. We wouldn't need bodhicitta for this. But if we want to become Zhang and really enlightened, we also need the purification of the veils of, of cognition. So these veils, in order to be removed, they need not only the wisdom, but they also need the skillful means and they need the bodhicitta. Without that, so the, the wisdom that cognizes the emptiness needs bodhicitta also. So then we can remove both ways. Otherwise, it's not possible. ドゲテラランヤデラドゲラタルゴシェアドゲラタルゴエネインバイエナドゲイキュデカレスタシニンザジジブレタジカレトラヤキギュカレレスあれドゲイキギュセデカレスあれドゲイキギュカレレスカ
we really need to put a lot of effort and it is not easy to just free ourselves from suffering and imagine how difficult it is to free others from suffering ニュモンガナロラジンババンオシオジドディガナネタンジムリバサダチャルドディガンソシエタムシチェゴヤレスディシエアノタンボディカンジジミメディシェゴヤレスアレンタンジンサデロワタンジンディレワレアルブスラタ
to just experience that and to set the right causes for that. But the fact that we are not able and instead we experience a lot of suffering shows that actually we have no freedom. We are completely prey of our own afflictions. And we would not need any kind of bodhicitta if we all had this freedom, because then we would then we would be completely independent in deciding what we want and what we do not want to, to experience or achieve or, or experience and so on. But we are all enslaved by our afflictions and therefore we experience what we do not want. In other words, suffering. And the main point that keeps us enslaved here, the main aspect from, from our afflictive states is this ego clinging, the grasping onto the eye. This one. Right. I Yena Round so we are currently praise of uh, enslaved by our own afflictions, in particular by the affliction that is called ego clinging. So what is ego clinging? You know, what comes up when we think, when we hear ego clinging? There are two ways of uh, clinging or ego clinging or clinging to an, uh, some kind of identification. One is the ego clinging of the person. And one is the ego clinging of phenomena. So they have different objects, but the way the clinging uh, works in the same manner. So how, how, what is meant? So for example, if we talk about the individual and the skandhas, yeah, whether it's the, the phenomena in the case, the skandhas or the individual, the person, then although these are not truly established, although they do not have an inherent, true, uh, established or existing core, we think that they do. We think that they are truly inherently existing in some kind of way. So to, so this is a, the clinging, the grasping, this, this kind of conception, this idea that distorts the true way of how things are. So a distortion has happened. We, we take something that is not truly established to be truly established. And this causes, this distortion of the way how things truly are causes all other afflictions. And when these tons of afflictions arise based on this misconception, this distortion of reality, then out of this, 
many, many forms of karma arise. So you see, right, the cause for suffering, where it lies. And this is how we are imprisoned, how we are tight, how we are, how we have, the, what, what, how we are, yeah, enslaved or what kind of fetters hold us, you see? Yes, ma'am. Do <laughs> Tan <laughs> どうにとうまいけわかわ。ね。そう。でばっかりなにえば、みんなとどこどこどこ。で、コロタンベコスシゲオ、ちょんでで。あ、どうね、どうね、とで、わ。わ、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で
steps that were discussed before of uh, uh, loving kindness and then compassion and then the great altruistic um, heart of compassion that then finally will lead to what we call bodhicitta so the mindset of wanting to achieve buddhahood so that we will be able to free all sentient beings from suffering and also establish them on the level of buddhahood so these are the various steps of the mind training and in this way we have to practice it Shenzhen的第三部分是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是什么？是
Langa to Majin Rodeja, O Yanko Langa Gil Modes and Chum Dorabo, O Yana Chu Yang Rab, Chum Rab, Shandaj Basando Rich, Keran Dram de Yova, you know. Hm, talk on it. Chul Chondo Yamare, Modegil Par, Dondo Yamare, the Yenea, Comic Tungu Yamare, they cannot rob a chair with Chagrava. Quin Quin Mish Migi Tungu Yamar, Mombe Tidder. Jason Magin Simjan did that tamje Tungit Tungit on and Dugamor, Tunit Tungit Tordu Yoris, Tungit on the same Yore de Gazim Shola Sumari, Tungit on the same Yagan, Tungit Dugamor, Tungit never Sondu Yore de Yene Yangs, Tungin Yila Momar Jugudus, Tungin Gujanga Dudugidus. Need it the one Dugur, the one Dugan. Timung Wangi, Rangi, they were tatter and jungudus. Till a robot chair and dashes, that robot chair, which is a diris. Then there is an, another reason, a third reason why it is really good to think of others, and that would be one we could say our common sense uh, or other the other our kind-heartedness being a good human being for example um so let me give the example first so even though you might not be related to every individual if you were in a difficult circumstance, like if you were witnessing a difficult situation where another person is in danger and you are able to help them, your help is needed and probably you would help. It's like an almost an innate capacity that we have to help someone when they are in danger. For example, if somebody falls uh, in, in the river and you are standing next to on the shore, then your help is needed. You would probably run there immediately and help that person. Or if that person is standing on the side of the road and does not see a car approaching and is about to walk and you see the car, you would probably take the person and stop it before it goes walks in front of the car. So in this, in this same way, like in this example, sentient beings, they do not want to experience suffering. They actually wish the contrary. They want to be happy. They want to be free from suffering. But they do all the time actions. They carry out actions unknowingly that cause them suffering. They are unaware. So is it not, is it not normal for us to have compassion for such a, such a situation, to, to really have a, a kind heart and empathy towards such a circumstance? It's really a situation that requires us to 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 do something about it, not to help each other, isn't it? So in the same way, how in this example, the person maybe didn't see the river, or maybe didn't see the car. In the same way, all our mother sentient beings do not wish at all to experience suffering. They want to be happy. But because they don't know what they are doing, they don't know how to avoid suffering. It is like Shantideva says, they are running towards suffering all the time while they actually do not want suffering. And Shantideva then also says they, they wish, they truly wish for happiness, but out of their ignorance, they are, um, defeating or let's say um, uh, er um, eradicating the possibility for joy all the time out of ignorance. So although, although that's really what they wish for, they make it impossible to happen out of ignorance. And although they want to avoid suffering, they are running towards suffering all the time. Yeah. Okay, there she is. Let the time is over, so let's close here.
Çancı uzenci oğren bu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julika. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you again. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.